Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and in this video we're going to talk about distributed scheduling using JobRunner and Spring Boot. So before we dive into the code, let's actually talk about what JobRunner is. JobRunner is a distributed scheduler. So that means if you want to run job on multiple nodes, then it's guaranteed that only one instance is actually executing the job. So how is this different from how Spring is doing scheduling? So if you run a function or a method using the add scheduled annotation, then all of the instances are executing that job at the same time if, if it's scheduled to, to some extent. So that means if you have an application, um, like for example running it in a container and you have um, scaled it horizontally, then you might have multiple nodes and they are all executing the job. And there are some jobs for which this may be okay, but there are other jobs where you just want to make sure that you only want one single instance of that job. And even if you don't run multiple nodes of your application, this can also happen if you run um, rolling deployment. So you have one instance running that should execute a job and then you deploy a new version, you spin up a new container, for example. And at that moment in time, it can happen that the job is executed on both nodes simultaneously, which you really just want to avoid. So for this to work, there needs to be some sort of storage where the nodes can synchronize. So they can figure out who's the primary node that should be the one executing the job and who are the secondary nodes that are not allowed to execute that same job. And that is what Job Runner is doing. It comes with a storage abstraction, so you can just synchronize on who's the primary node and who's the secondary one. So you may be wondering how does Job Runner compare to other frameworks such as Quartz? And I'm gonna talk about this in a dedicated video, but it's enough to say that Job Runner feels much more lightweight as compared to Quartz. And with that out of the way, let's code. So there we are in our IDE. Let's quickly, as usual, take a look at what we have in here. So I'm going with Spring Boot 272. And other than the, the default dependencies, I'm bringing in um, the H2 database, which I'm gonna use for the storage abstraction. And I also provide the JDBC starter, uh, just to make sure that there is a data source that can be passed to uh, Job Runner. So Job Runner stands on its own. Um, you can just drag in the dependency, but um, it also comes with a Spring Boot starter, which is what I'm gonna use uh, for this example. Before we start writing a few jobs, let's quickly also take a look at the properties. So you can see I have the, the default data source configuration here, which is just used to configure the H2 in-memory database. And here's where things are getting a little bit more interesting. So uh, I enabled the job scheduler, the, the background job server. These are kind of the default settings. I enabled the dashboard, which I will show you in a second, which is pretty neat. And I had set the poll interval to five seconds. And I also talked about that. Um, I copy pasted the additional config that you can also find on the job runner website. Um, but we will not concern ourselves with these too much. So let's actually start writing a few jobs. All right, so for us to create our first job, um, let's quickly create a new component and we call that, we call that job factory. Um, that's a spring component. And we just want to invoke that after it has been created on schedule. So there are a few ways to actually schedule a job. Um, you can use the static method um, NQ, which is this one, and then can just pass a lambda, like this one, for example. So this would work, but I would have to configure a little bit of, of, of code for, for job runner to make this work. Um, and since we're using the Spring Boot Starter, we're not uh, invoking the NQ method directly, but what we're gonna do instead is we are working with the with the job scheduler. So there's a scheduler, which is this one, and it is already configured um, by the Spring Boot Startup uh, from Job Runner, and it has access to the data source. So instead of doing this, we can just, we should actually be good and replace this with scheduler NQ, and then we write something here. So let's not um, call this hello word, but this is fire and forget because there, there are essentially three ways of scheduling jobs, right? This is the first one, which is fire and forget. We just, we just schedule it, it gets executed and off we go. The second one is kind of a delayed execution. So you want to schedule something in the future. And the third one is uh, recurring executions. Like usually we would have something like a cron job, um, like, scheduling something that runs every day, every hour, every week, like these kind of things. So we start with the fire and forget. Um, so I can enqueue this directly. And now if I go to the application, um, that's not the right one. Um, let's go to the application and let's just start that. 
So what we will see is um, that the application is starting successfully. You can already see uh, Fire and Forget has been printed to the console. There are a few things more going on here. So we can see that Job Runner is preparing the database by executing a few migrations here. And I can see that there's the background server here and you can also see which one is the, the primary uh, node that's taking care of the of scheduling. And we're using the H2 storage provider. Again, this, this is kind of an abstraction. You can use different uh, storage providers here. It's just important for all these nodes um, that are taking part in the scheduling that they have some common means of uh, agreeing uh, persistently who the, the primary node is. All right, um, let me stop this. And next up, we just, we just write a few things uh, that we will use here. So as I said, uh, this is fire and forget. Um, and then there is um, the sketch of function apparently. So we could go ahead and say instant, no, dash, instant now plus, um, plus 30 seconds, for example. So it runs the delayed. And now we could say this is, this is scheduled, right? And before we execute that, let's also do something recurrently. So the final piece is um, schedule recurrently and then we can pass in a cron expression or we can use one of the um, existing one like cron daily which runs um, either at midnight or noon we figured it out and could just run this so these are the three ways of running um, jobs or at least the three ways there are probably more just uh, the, the three primary ones that we're gonna um, discuss here NQ, which is fire and forget schedule which is sometime in the future and then recurrently which happens multiple times so if we if we go back um, to the application, let's go there. Um, something's I'm not good at typing apparently, so <laughs> let's go back there and run this. So now you can still see um, fire and forget is executed pretty much immediately. Now we are waiting for the other one, which is the schedule one, which should happen in a few seconds from now. And uh, the daily one we're probably not going to see because it's it's not not well, it's, it's close to to lunchtime. Um, anyway, we've seen a scheduled one. So how do we see um, the, the daily one? And this is where the dashboard is coming in, um, which I've mentioned previously. All right, so let me just put this side by side. This is uh, the dashboard that comes with Job Runner. Um, so what you can see here is an overview of the jobs. Uh, we can see there are two jobs that have succeeded actually. And uh, if we just look at this side by side, you can see the fire and forget job has been executed one minute ago and the other one as well, the scheduled one. So you can see them here. You can just dive in and there's quite a bit of information which is really neat. Um, this, it does make sense to have this up and running in the DAF or a staging environments. Usually you will probably not have this accessible in a production environment, um, at least not unprotected. So I can see that it has succeeded um, and that's all good. Uh, this, is, this is pretty fine. Um, now I can also access the recurring jobs and we can see this is the daily one. It's 12 a.m., so that's midnight. Um, so since it's now lunchtime, uh, it's gonna fire in 12 hours from now, and we're not gonna wait until then. So, but this provides a nice way of seeing what's going on under the hood, and also seeing the execution of the jobs. All right, so let's go back to the IDE and now look at a more spring-like way of configuring jobs. So, back in the IDE, we'll let's just um, configure a new component. We call that the worker, and. What I want to do now is use the annotation based configuration, which is what we usually use in, in a spring environment, right? So I make this a component again and let's start. So let's pretend this worker has to execute two functions. The first one is sync, which is just syncing some stuff. And then there's also kind of a backup functionality, which we consider to take quite a long time, right? So for the sync, how, how do we make this actually um, a job? So let's first give ourselves a lock. Um, so we can log it a little bit here. Um, that's the log effect. Yeah, that looks fine. So, um, I need to import that, of course. There we go. That's this one. So, sync. Um, what are we going to sync? We just write um, syncing. Um, that's pretty much all there is. And now we can use the, the annotation. So there's the job annotation. It's the, the primary one. We call this just sync. And now to schedule this, um, I'm using uh, the recurring annotation and I can pass in an ID and that's that's also been visible in, uh, that's going to be visible in the dashboard. Um, 
Yeah, let's do it five seconds. And if I want, I can also pass the, the zone ID so I could tell that to be executed um, in this time zone, right? Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Yeah, that should already work. So if we go to the application, um, stop and rerun. Now that should print that it's syncing. Yeah, fire forget. So let's see if the other one is executing. Oh yeah, that's using the logger, so it's here. Uh, this has been used. Uh, this was written using the the print time function, and this this is using proper logger here. So uh, it's syncing. So that's working quite well. Um, and we can see that yeah, there, there's one thing that I that I noted, and you've probably seen that as well. So it's it's writing um, syncing here. But this job actually should execute every five seconds. But as you can see, it does not, right? So you can see there are 15 seconds in between, and here are also 15 instead of the instead of the five seconds. So there's a, the kind of a limitation that you cannot schedule to the exact second. Uh, as far as I know, that that's going to be part of the JobRunner Pro um, license. Um, so um, you have to figure that one out. Usually, that's not a problem, right? Usually, um, I rarely need the resolution down to the second. This is just important if you want to run something that should not run before, right? If you want to run something at midnight, but not before, then you would have to schedule this sometime after midnight just to make sure that it runs there because usually the jobs are run um, a bit earlier than, than they should. Um, but again, this is not really a, a big limitation, but just something to be aware of. So we have scheduled this and now let's also look at um, another nice feature, which we're also gonna use the dashboard for. So back to the backup function, let's call this one backup and it can run pretty much on the same schedule, I'd say, recurring. But we want to make sure that this um, takes a little bit longer. So that looks fine. It's just copy copy the values over. And what we're going to do there is tell it, okay, look, I'm backing up, Woo, backing up, that's fine. Um, and now we can access a progress bar, which is then visible in the dashboard. This, this is what I want to show you right now. And this is also quite neat, I, I think. So we can ask for the, um, I think it's job contacts to be injected here. And what we can do now is we can access to, to a progress bar. So we can tell it context, um, that's progress bar. And yeah, we have to pass the total amount, which is 100 for 100% 100 of that case. Makes it easier to calculate. Now let's, um, now we're not gonna use 100, that's a lot, let's do 25% increases. So um, I'm gonna sleep here, seconds, sleep, five seconds, uh, just, to, just to pretend that this is a very long running job. Um, yeah, and now we can just borrow, it's not progress, it's um, set value, um, we can just invoke bar set value. So after the first sleep, it's 25% and 50, 75, 100, and then job is finished. So let me just quickly check if everything's in place here. All right, that looks good. Um, now let's start the application and let's take a look at what this looks like in the progress bar. So just making sure everything's running as expected. So that looks good. So let's briefly revisit our dashboard. So let me bring this back here side by side. Um, and we can now take a look at the recurring jobs. So there's sync and backup. These are just the IDs and names that I have um, assigned. And let's quickly go to the backup job um, just to make sure uh, where are they processing. Backup is here. Now I can just go in there um, and it says job is processing. Um, let me quickly check if it's it's running already because we should be able to see ah there we go you can see here um, there's a green bar it's probably a little bit hard to see let me zoom in if that's possible ah no I messed it up because now you don't see the progress um, but there's the small and it took me a while to figure this out myself because I was looking for it um, all the time but you will see that um, this progress bar here is just progressing um, as per the values that I have set in in the job um, and that's pretty much all there is to it um, one thing that um, that you may have seen here as well. Let me just go back to the worker and let me just close Safari so it is not hiding the view here. Um, there's something, this job is actually scheduled to run every five seconds, um, but the execution takes much longer, right? So this takes, um, how long do I sleep here? Like 20 seconds. 
Um, and job runner is doing the same thing that Spring is doing here. Um, as long as there's one job still running, it would not sketch a new one, even if that messes up with the schedule here. Uh, and the reason being that it would exhaust all your underlying resources if you just keep scheduling um, more jobs um, while the old ones are still running. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this tutorial. Um, I'll dive into quads and maybe a comparison of job runner and quads in a later tutorial. Just let me know what you want to see there. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.